If you watched my possibly problematic batik blouse video, you may be aware that I have a thing for 1980s fantasy movies. But how can you go adventuring in a Goblin King's recreational backyard labyrinth without a casual vest to accessorize your look? I picked up Truly Victorian's TV 499 1890s vests because I've entertained the idea of making a late 1800s vest to go with my walking skirt and the blouse I haven't finished. Yeah, if there's an award for procrastination, that one's a contender. The pro to the 1890s vest is that it comes with a full metric schwack of options. Single or double breasted, couple of different colors, facings, all sorts of things. The cons, it's highly tailored and it's meant to be worn over a corset. If I'm making a 1980s vest from this 1890s pattern, it's going to need to fit me without the extra shapewear. The vague inspiration for this outfit comes from a time when vests were either worn open or a little bit loose rather than hugging your curves. I printed and taped the pattern because I'd like to be able to refer to it again in the future I traced the largest size. And then I traced it again to try enlarging it. It's not really scientific, but I also made the decision to fudge my seams. Instead of the usual half-inch seams Truly Victorian builds in, I decided to go with quarter-inch seams. I also fudged the darts as well. I stashed over the fabric. The back is a suiting that possibly originally came from my mother-in-law's craft room. The lining is a mystery fabric swiped from Mum sometime last year. And the front of the vest may be familiar to those of you who've seen my pocket swap video. I bought that back in the early 2000s to make a Victorian corset, but as a fashion corset, so outside. See, the vest from Labyrinth is this really nice looking cream color, possibly a satin with what looks like embroidered organic swirls or scrolls. I, on the other hand, have a black fake taffeta with black velvet flocking. I think it's a pretty good inverse comparison. I mean, who wouldn't want fuzzy black flocking on their gothy labyrinth vest? Oh yeah, everything she's saying is completely true. My other reason for going with the black vest is to keep the garment fairly simple. If I'm wearing it over my billowy sleeved purple and rainbow blouse, for example, I don't want something that will fight with the pattern of the fabric. If anything, I just want to break up the wall of rainbow leaves to add a little interest. If I'm wearing solid colors or neutrals, however, the flocking should add a little textural interest, provided you've somehow managed to get close enough to me to see it. <laughs> I need a break. Let's go to Michael's. I stopped in at Michael's after dropping the husband off at work and then again after picking him up because I found that all of my footage had disappeared. Possibly because my phone thought I was taking a photo instead of beautifully shot video of the Halloween village it's attempting to lure me into buying. Not today, Michael's. My mother has a rather extensive Norman Rockwell Santa's village that I'm still trying to figure out if it's going to be one of ours or whether it's going to be donated to a good home. Actually, we came back for some painting supplies for the Husbeast and I used that as an excuse to run around with my phone out. I need to go back and see if they've updated anything because I really didn't see a lot that appealed to me last time I was over and... <laughs> I'm waiting for the carvable faux pumpkins to go on sale. I completely ignored all the directions for this vest. Sorry, Truly Victorian, I'm sure they were good directions, but as previously discussed, I wasn't looking for a highly engineered waistcoat. 
I loosely followed the directions Bianca of the Closet Historian outlined in her Making a Retro Waistcoat Sewing Diary from November of 2019. In essence, cut the fronts and the backs from both fashion fabric and lining, Sew the darts, then sew the side, and I guess the back seams. If you're like me, you decide to reduce the darts even further. So you rip them out and restitch them so you have just the barest hint of a dart. You might also want to adjust the bottom edge of your vest, otherwise, if you're just following the edge of the vest as a guide, you're going to have a jagged area where the bottom of the dart bumps out, if you know what I mean. Then place your lining and fashion fabric right sides together and sew around pretty much all of the edges except for right over the shoulders and your tailbone. In fact, when you sew the underarms and the neckline, leave about one to two inches of space from the top of the shoulder altogether. Don't forget to clip your curves so everything lies nicely, otherwise you'll have some pretty wonky curved seams and I'm pretty certain that Bianca will put a curse on you. Press, turn inside out or outside in, whatever the case is, and then press again. I used an old knitting needle to try and get the seams to turn out nicely. There's a bit of a trick to sewing the shoulders, but once you figure it out, it looks quite nice. You sew the shoulder seams right sides together, and then you twist the lining to do the same. If you have enough slack from leaving that inch or two of space uh, at the top of the seams, um, you can either pull the unstitched neck or underarm seam through and sew them right sides together, and then just hand stitch the rest of it. I think I used a ladder stitch, but I could be mistaken. Again, refer back to Bianca's video for all of the ins and outs. She explains this a whole lot better than I ever could. Then I made some buttonholes and sewed on some buttons. I considered a set of flashy 80s style faux pearl plastic buttons, but the allure of tasteful subtlety once again won out. I make no guarantees of making the same decision if I can find a super 1980s, early 1990s style tapestry print, because that's just begging for all of the fake romantic glitz that epitomizes the post prepster era. It's just a little on the small side, but that's to be expected when you aren't using the usual shapewear. As an experiment in hacking a mostly 1890s pattern for the 1980s, I think it's a success. Next step, of course, would be to draft my own. All in good time. If you enjoyed today's video, please boop the like button. It really helps the video and my channel get to more viewers like you.